Good evening, hello again, it's Des uh, talking about more knots and we're going to carry on with our knots that form loops, useful fixed eyes at the end of a piece of rope that we can use um, and we're going to talk about the bowline. So previously the last one we talked about was the figure of eight, uh, the figure of eight in the bite and the figure of eight follow through. Really useful alpine, uh, well not alpine, but really useful climbing knots for giving you a temporary um, fixed loop on the end of a piece of rope. Now we're going to talk about the traditional sealing knot used to give you that loop on the end of a piece of rope and we're going to talk about the bowline. Um, this is, once you get it right, once you've practiced it, really easy to tie and also, more importantly in the context of this knot, really easy to untie even after it's been under really, really, really heavy load and heavy strain. I'll show you that and demonstrate that and why that um, and why that is. And that makes it very useful for when we're um, attaching a, a, a sheet to a sail um, because obviously that's under a lot of pressure as the sail is pulling on the boat, you know, pulling the boat along uh, essentially. Um, and being able to easily untie that when you're when you're stowing sails and changing sails in a boat um, makes it really useful to have a knot that you can untie from the end um, really, really easily. Um, it can, however, work itself loose if it's not under load um, for any length of time. Um, <clears throat> so it's just one to be aware of again that probably need to stop or not in um, for a little bit of extra safety, a little bit of a sort of warm fuzzy feeling that you're happy with the knot. So how do we tie it then? And the first thing I'm going to do is I have my rope here. This is going to be the working um, rope leading towards the actual the, the thing it's fixed to, whether it's the boat, whether it's um, you know something that's being pulled on. Um, and this end towards me is going to be the end in which our, our uh, loop is going to be fixed. First thing I do, I'm right-handed. So I take my hand like this and I give the rope a twist away from me like that. And I end up with a little loop here like that. Now you can do this right-handed or you can do it left-handed. If you don't do it left-handed, you just do the steps the opposite way around. The important thing is I've ended up with a loop in the rope like this, with this tail end, the working end that I'm, I'm, I'm working with here, going over the top of the rope. Now you may remember this knot from your childhood when you got told the little story about the rabbit that goes through the hole. So we're going underneath through this hole, round behind the tree, round behind this tree here, and then back through the hole like that. And what we end up with is quite a simple attractive knot that looks like this. And this is quite a nice view, I think, of the knot because it actually, when you think about it, shows you how this knot works. And um, any pressure on this rope here, um, on this rope here, is going to put pressure on this rope here. Any pressure on this rope here is going to put pressure on this rope here. Any pressure on that rope there is going to tighten up again on this. And you can kind of see each of the touch points where the rope's touching each other and how it provides friction on itself and holds itself fast. So when you tighten it like that, you can see how the actual knot works. And what you can see then is this tail end we've got is coming down um, in here like, like this. Now I probably misjudged this and given this a little bit too much tail. So depending what you're going to use this loop for, you can actually then potentially, if you want to, put another stopper knot um, in here around this loose end and that just secures that both out of the way. Um, so you know, when you're on a, a sailing boat that's a bit windy, it's not flapping around the place, um, but also gives you a bit of extra uh, uh, assurance in that knot and sort of safety in that knot that if this does work free and start to become loose and slip, this bit here will just slip, 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 slip stick there and you know that knot's not going to slip and, and get let free. Nice and simple, really easy to do once you practice it and get it right. Now I mentioned this was really easy to undo after a bit of pressure so let's put some pressure on this. Oh, try and get that nice and tight and that's probably about as tight as my weak little spindly muscles can get it and you can hopefully see there's quite a bit of tension in that knot itself and easy to undo because if you look here you can see how this rope is coming this piece of the rope is coming around and all we need to do is just put a little bit of friction on that uh, pressure on that and you can see it move up and that's freed up this little bit we loosen that through and suddenly our knot's nice and loose and very easy and quick to undo so let's do that one more time our bowline 
I've got the end of the rope running away from me, sort of the far end, the tail that I'm going to be that I'm going to be working with, and I take my right hand here on the rope and I bend it away from me like that. And I've ended up with the rope coming down, underneath, round and over the top like that. And then take my rabbit, as we say, we go through the hole, round behind the tree and back through the hole. And you can then see that running down along the inside of the fixed loop and tighten up. As we said before, we can then take this tie a stopper knot on that to give us extra, um, extra safety on that rope. I have seen this work free on a sail when it's just been tied like that as a sheet holding a, uh, holding a foresail in. I've seen that work free as you're, as you're um, uh, I can't remember the word, jiving or uh, jiving or turning in, uh, uh, turning with the wind and, it, and, it, and, it, and this sail then just starts flapping the buggery and in a windy day that's a real, it's quite dangerous actually having a sail flapping around like that um, and also quite a pain in the neck to go and, uh, go and get a hold of and get it reattached. To undo that knot then, as you can see here, we put a little bit of pressure on the, the top end of it and that frees it up and allows us to feed everything back through really simply, really easily. Shall we see if I can do this with my left hand? I don't know, we'll try it. So I'm left handed, take hold of the rope, a little twist away from myself. I'm going to take then the, the tail end of the rope, I'm going to take the rabbit through the hole, round behind the tree, back through the hole. And have I done it right? We have done it right. We have a nice bowline knot there. Fantastic. So, one of the other advantages of the bowline um, <clears throat> that's often touted um, is the fact that you can tie it one-handed. So when is tying it one-handed useful? Oh, sorry, did I, did I mention it's 17th of March, uh, St. Patrick's Day? Thank you. Cheers. Well, the example I gave you earlier, when you're working on a sailing ship, on a, on a, on a sailing craft, you know, fit up with sails, and you may have to hold on to a, the edge of a sail, the corner of a sail, the clue, I think it is, and to fix a rope to it. So you might have one hand holding on to the sail, but you then need to tie an actual loop um, <clears throat> um, to, to, to fix that sail to, to the sheet. Being able to do that one-handed is obviously very handy. So I'm gonna see if I can get this right. I've got my loose end of the rope here. I'm assuming this end is holding on to the actual the actual seal, and that I have taken the clue of the seal, looped it through, and I'm holding on to the seal with this hand. There is uh, my, my 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 rope, my sheep running away to to, to a halyard. Um, I come up to the rope like this. I come round underneath like that, and I here's a little bit of an awkward bit. I've got to pass this rope over, so to my fingers underneath the, uh, the rope, feed it back through, and let's tighten that up and see what we've got. Would you look at that? One bowline tied with one hand. So it is doable, um, but that probably takes a little bit more practice uh, than what we showed you earlier. Quick introduction to the bowline, some of its uses. Um, I hope you I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you can practice that um, uh, before before the weekend. Thank you very much.